Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Loop Masters and it's time for another production basics tutorial. This is actually gonna be a continuation of my sidechain compression tutorial that I already did for this series. So if you haven't checked that out, go check that out because this is gonna build off of that. And I'm not gonna cover exactly how sidechain compression works or why you should do it. That was already covered in the other video. This is gonna be like, you know, intermediate or too advanced sidechain compression tutorial. We're gonna be using an effect racks, we're gonna be using EQ8 to make a bandpass filter, and then just applying sidechain compression to the subier part of a baseline. Why might you wanna do this? Let's say you get a sample pack like I have here, and this is from Triad Sounds, Brazilian bass, and it's got this baseline in it right here that has a lot of frequency content. It's got the subby low end, it's got mid and even higher frequency content. Now, if I'm gonna side chain this to my kick and snare up here, and if I do it the way I showed you in the last video, of just coming into the compressor, dropping it on the bass, side chaining it to that beat, cranking up the ratio. You can see that it's pumping the entire sound. It's the entire sound file is being compressed when the kick and snare happens and then it's pumping back in. And I don't want that. I want that mid frequency content and that higher stuff to pass over the kick and the snare and just side chain the lower subby or bass frequencies to make sure my mix is okay. I don't want it to have that artistic pumping sound. I want that higher mid-level content just to pass over. So the way to do that inside of Ableton Live is to make a bandpass filter. So I'm gonna go ahead and click out of there, just take my EQ8, drop it on here, and I'm gonna shut down all of the filters but one, and then come into that filter and do times four high cut or low pass. And then what I wanna do is click this and go Control G to group. You can also right click and hit group as well. I just prefer the shortcuts. And then I wanna kind of show everything over here. I wanna see my macros, I wanna see my chains. And what I wanna do is right click this frequency map to macro one. And then I wanna take this chain and Control D to duplicate it. And instead of having that filter be a low pass, I wanna make it a high pass. So come up here to high pass and watch what happens as I move this frequency macro knob now. This band right here has this frequency content and this band right here has this frequency content. So all of the frequency content is being passed through, but what we've done is split it up into two different channels that are running in parallel. So if I go ahead and solo this band, let me turn off this for a second. So that's the subby content. That's the mid-level content. So what I can do now is first of all, let's stay organized by renaming and typing low and then re renaming down here high and jumping into the low channel and then taking our compressor and doing our side chaining from just this low end. So if I come in here and do this now, again, pump up that ratio. So you see that I'm getting that pumping on that sub, but I'm not getting any pumping happening on that high because it's being allowed to pass right through, right past that compressor. And now if I crank and turn on my uh, drum loop again, I'm not getting that artistic pumping, I'm just getting my mix level pumping for the sub to move it out of the way for the kick and the snare. So that's kind of a quick look at how you can use effects rags to get more specific things done and go to that next level inside of your productions. What you would do now is just go ahead and save this, you know, hit that save button and say, you know, two band side chain compressing, compressor rack or something like that, something that's gonna help you remember what it is. And then in the future, you just drag and drop it on your channel just remember to uh, route your sidechain audio from down here and you're good to go. You have it every time. You don't need to redo the steps or anything like that. So I just wanted to share that quick tip with you and show you how it's done inside of Ableton Live. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoy this series. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm Joshua Casper here for Loopmasters and I'll see you in the next video.